Today we're going to talk about the money, how much money an iOS developer can make in 2022. So we're going to talk about the tools that you can use to see and find out the numbers that are out there. Also, I'm going to teach you a technique that I personally use when I talk to the recruiters to land a better job offer and to negotiate about a better salary. So stick around, we're going to talk about data points, we're going to talk about how to put itself together and hopefully help you to land a better job with a better, with a better salary. So the first data point is how much you're currently making your current compensation. I would like to pause right there and point out that your current compensation should be private. I know it's not illegal in all 50 states to ask how much you're currently making. Listen, the market is really good right now. And uh, if it is the case for that recruiter or for that company, I highly suggest that you would move forward with other candidates. If it is a deal breaker for them, don't budge, don't lie, don't try to um, dance around and try to figure out how to avoid that question. Just don't answer that question. If it is a deal breaker for them, move forward with other opportunities. This is none of their business. There's a cost of labor. There's a budget for this position. It's all they should care about. Also, you should never start your salary negotiation with phrase like this. Well, I'm currently making this. I would like to make this. As soon as you name your current compensation, a lot of recruiters and a lot of companies will hold it as your baseline it should never happen because you might be underpaid and especially for people from underrepresented backgrounds it is the case a lot of women engineers also underpaid and we know the pay gap is a huge issue so you should never start your salary negotiation or uh announcing your expectation with your currently with your current seller how much you're currently making it's a big no no it's a private private data for yourself but it's important data because uh, when you look at the market when you look how much companies are offering how much uh, money you can potentially land you can compare with your current compensation if you're underpaid or if you're overpaid and decide if you want to go in the market and also like it's a very important piece of information so if you lose your job how much money you can land if you leave your job right now so let's talk about the tools that you can use. I personally use two tools that I would like to show you and uh, demonstrate how to use them. So let's let's take a look. So uh, one of the tools that I like to use are uh, LinkedIn Salary, Levels FYI, and Indie Salary. I normally use LinkedIn Salary and Levels FYI just to see the generic number, the generic information. So let's take a look at LinkedIn Salary. So go to work, go to salary, and here you can select your specialty. So, and here you can filter out by the years of experience and also you can filter out by, lo by the location. Um, we're going to talk about how to average your number based on, on those numbers and how to utilize that data when you talk to recruiters a little bit later in this video. So for Levels of YI, like I said, you can search for a uh, software engineer, like for example, uh, software engineer. And you can see different different salaries for different companies. What I don't like about Levels FYI that you can't really narrow it down by iOS developers because in different specialties in software development, in software industry, in tech industry, paid might be paid a little bit differently. And the last resource that I don't really use very often, but sometimes I do, is in the salary. So I searched for iOS developer in the United States and this is the average number that uh, I got. 
And again, the average number for the entire country, the average number from San Francisco to Arkansas, numbers can vary very, very much. So this is the average number. But what I liked about it, that I can see different companies with different numbers, what they can possibly expect on the market, what you can what they can possibly offer you on the market. So we can see uh, San Francisco, San Jose, uh, Breventon, uh, Oregon, New York, Austin, Atlanta. And again, those are very generic numbers. We're going to talk about how to narrow it down or how to determine your number more specifically a little bit later in this video. So what I would like to do next is to talk about how to utilize that data. So we saw, we saw the data, we saw how much money you can potentially make. Now it's time, time to talk to recruiters. So like this is one technique that I personally use. When I talk to the recruiters, first of all, I would like to talk the money first because not every company can afford me, not every company can meet my financial expectation, and this is fine. And I am very much respectful of the time for my, of my interviewers in my time. So if the money is not there, I'd rather not talk to them, at least as of right now, as the market is right now, I'd rather talk to the companies that can afford me and can make rather good offer. So, uh, how how to talk about the money with the recruiters. It's really important that you provide a range of um, the compensation. What I personally do, I provide a little, like the, the bottom line, I provide a little bit higher, a little bit higher than like my current compensation and a little bit higher, it can be like 5K higher or 10K higher, it depends. So. I try to make my lower end pretty high. And my highest end, like I would I would normally stand at uh, stop at 190 or like let's say to like 200. So let's say I come up with a range from 160 to 200. And now I listen very carefully what recruiters would say to me, what companies would offer. So I talk to agencies, I talk to direct candidates or direct companies, direct recruiters, corporate recruiters, and I collect the data, how much they ask and, see, and hear their reaction. Sometimes recruiters say, oh, that is very high. We can't, the, the maximum that we can make for you is 150. Sometimes companies can say, well, we have that. We can probably offer you 200K or 220K for your level. Sometimes companies say, hey, like we can probably make 160, but it's like, it's going to be really hard for us. So, I determine where the market is at right now. And per my per my research, per my experience, per my uh, qualifications, I see like for a senior iOS developer, it can be in anywhere from 160k to 180k like comfortably when we talk about 190 close to 200s and those are pretty like pretty uh, rare numbers and there are not a lot of companies that have that budget but they are out there there are startups little well-funded startups that, that are willing to pay that much and there are fan companies like amazon google apple that also can afford that much money that um, as a base salary. So talking to the recruiters and provide your salary expectation, your range, and go high. You can always go low. You can always go low. Go high and see where you can land. And also talk to many recruiters. Talk to multiple recruiters because one recruiter might have one data set. So let's, like, for example, when I talk to recruiters in Denver, companies in Denver unfortunately don't offer you that high of a salary. 
Denver is a little bit behind. So they provide me one number. When I talk to recruiters that work on remote positions or let's say a company is uh, located in New York or San Francisco or California, they normally pay a little bit more. And I can maneuver very comfortably the range between like let's say 170 to 200 and land somewhere in the middle like 175 180 185 so very comfortably so it's really important to collect multiple data points it's very important to talk to many recruiters so and let's say you're uh, we kind of like getting closer to salary negotiation. When you negotiate the salary, it's really important to start negotiate your negotiation at the beginning. And a lot of recruiters are open to that. I always start my conversation with a recruiter with a compensation. It's really important to me. I don't work for free. Exposure doesn't pay the bills. So, and I'm very respectful of their time and the company time. So I really wanna make sure that the money is there. But let's say you landed on the final stage, on the offer stage, and you don't like the number. So what should you do? Again, when you negotiate your salary, you should operate data points. Again, your mortgage, your car, your, I don't know, like uh, your lifestyle, your baby mama, your baby daddy, your, um, I don't know, your vacation to Miami, your whatever you plan to buy doesn't really matter for the company data does matter for the company so like one very compelling data for the company is um your counter offer so if you have a job offer from another company with a higher number you can present that and it's a very strong data another a little bit less compelling data you can say hey i'm not at the final offer yet I, I, or at the uh, offer stage yet but that company we agree that we're not gonna go below this number and that number is higher than you offered me and the third data point is what you can actually bring to the company you can reiterate on your years of experience on your expertise what you can bring to the table and the complexity of the job and you can also provide links to like uh, link in recruit uh, linking salary levels fyi what the market is currently paying as a general information but you can reiterate that you like you deserve you based on your experience you should get a higher number and also when you talk about the number when you talk about higher number and also when you talk about the higher number you should be confident and say hey i would like to get it closer to let's say 180k can we get closer to 180k if you're not there or like 200k whatever your number is give them the number don't be vague don't be shy don't negotiate your salary over email always call and give them the number that you want and see what they can can come up with so Another like really strong data point is the counter offer from your current company. So your current company can actually come up with a compensation with a counter offer and say, "Hey, uh, we can beat that, and we we can provide that." So you can also bring counter offer to the table and see if company can beat that or not. So and uh, with that, I think we are done. Um, go get them. The market is really good right now. Talk to many recruiters. Go high. And it's easier to go low or go lower or come down if you go high. And it's much more difficult to go higher if you agree for lower compensation. It's almost always very, very, very unpleasant for both parties. And I would say start high and adjust your number accordingly. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye, y'all.